Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. I have been solving data sufficiency problems for GMAT out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, 12th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You should be able to find it at mba.com. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 276, data sufficiency problem number 39. Let's take a look at it. It says, in a random sample of 80, 80 adults, how many are college graduates? So we have a sample of 80. Question simply is, how many, how many of them are college graduates? So I stood on the sidewalk on a, on, a, on a corner, and all the passers-by that I encountered, I asked them, are you a college graduate? Yes or no? And I kept a tally, and I counted 80 people. And the question simply is, out of those 80 people that I encountered, how many people were college graduates? Let's see what sort of information they give us in the two statements. Or rather, two statements. Statement number one, before we do our work, since this is a data sufficiency problem, the very first thing we should do is write down A, D, B, C, E to keep track of our inventory. Let's look at the first statement. The first statement tells us that in the sample, the number of adults who are not college graduates, so the number of adults who are not college graduates, let's give it a symbol here, let's call it G prime, and G would be the graduate. This, this symbol that I wrote here, where should I put it? I don't know why I introduced the complications. That symbol that I wrote on the top here is read as G prime. It just means whatever G is, uh, this guy is not that. Do you understand? So if you had a, a W for a white guy, then this would be anybody who's not a white person. This, uh, if you had a C for it to represent a child, uh, then this would be anybody who's not a child. That's what it means. It encompasses the rest. So what did they tell us in the first statement? This tells us the number of adults who are not college graduates is three times the number of adults, number of three times the number who are college graduates. So they tell they tell us the G prime is three times G, three times the number of college graduates in this sample. The number of people who are, I'm going to read one more time here. It says in the sample, the number of adults who are not college graduates, which is this part here, number of adults who are not college graduates, G prime, not graduate is, equal sign means e, is, or are, is in this case, is three times the number of people who are college graduate. The question is, is this information enough to figure out how many graduates must have been in a sample of 80? And the answer is yes, of course. Very simple. I can do it, we can do it algebraically and show it actually mathematically, or we can just think if there are 80 people and if there are three times as college graduate, then, then this, this quantity has to be 60, rather, uh, we have to have a split of 60 and 20. This must be the college graduate, this must be the non-graduate. You see there are three times as many non-graduate as there are graduate. The question is how do we solve this thing to show it here? It's very simple. G equals three times G and we know that G graduate plus the non-graduate has to equal 80. And we now know that non uh, people who are, people who are non-graduate is three times the graduate. So we'll put it in here. G must be 20. There you go. So there are 20 graduate and there are 60 non-graduates. First, first statement is enough. First statement is enough to figure out how many people must have been college graduate in a sample of 80 if there are three times as many people who are not college graduate. So the first statement is enough. That tells us that the answer, whatever it is, has to be either A or a D. It cannot be B, C or E. Let's look at a second statement. Second statement tells us that in the sample, excuse me, in the sample, the number of adults who are not college graduate, number of adults who are not college graduate, which is this part here, G prime is what we're calling, the number of adults who are not college graduate, as I introduce the symbol here, 
is, is means equal, is 40 more, 40, 40 more than the number of people who are college graduates. There you go. That's the equation that we get out of second statement. That's how we read it here. I'm going to read. You see, mathematical equation is like a sentence. This is this is a sentence written in mathematical language, and I'm going to read the sentence to you. G prime, as you already know, means people who are not graduates. So this tells me the number of people who are not college graduate is 40 more than the number of people who are college graduates. Had it said 40 less, see here it says 40 more than the number of people who are college graduate. Since we are, it's 40 more, it doesn't matter whether, whether I write 40 here or 40 after the G. Because G plus 40 would have been the same as this one. But had they said it is 40 less, then I would have, then we would have to write, if, it's, if, if they had said it's 40 less than the number of college graduates, then we would have to write G first and then minus 40. Do you understand? Question is, is this, is this equation, is this information enough to figure out how many graduates there in a sample of, sample of 80? Let's find out. Well, we know from here the sample is 80. That tells me that 80 must equal G plus G prime. That's your G prime here. So G prime must be G prime being the number of people who are not college graduate in a sample of 80, the number of people who are not college graduate must equal 80 minus the number of people who are graduate. 80 minus the number of people who are graduate. There you go. From this equation, as you can clearly see, we can figure out G. If you add G to both sides, this G will end up there. I don't know if I should show you all this stuff. See, I'm adding G to both sides. And this G, will just, this G will disappear, will end up there. That's what I'm going to do here. I'm, I don't want to show you all the baby steps. So if you bring the G over that side, it becomes 2G, and bring the 40 to this side. When I say bring, when I say bring 40 to this side, there's just an adult way of saying subtract 40 from both sides. If you subtract 40 from both sides, this 40 disappears and ends up on this side. And you end up with 40 mi 80 minus 40, which is 40, and G equals 20. There you go, voila, which is exactly what we found before. So this information is also enough to figure out how many graduates there must be in the sample. Since either statement by itself is enough to answer the question, the correct answer here is D. But notice what else? Not, notice something that information is consistent. Information is consistent. I have seen many a time fake exams, and of course I'm not at liberty to name names, but I've seen many a time there are fake exams on the, on the market where you solve the problem and based on one statement you find out that there are 20 graduates in the sample and based on the other, based on what is given in the second statement you find out that there are 30 graduates in the sample. That is not the case in the GMAT. This information in the two statements are always consistent. Always consistent. If, you, if based on the first statement you found out that there are 100 people in the village and the second statement tells you that there are 200 people in the village, something has gone rotten, something has gone fishy. Do you understand? The, the information is always, uh, they, they substantiate each other, they do not uh, contradict each other. But anyway, that was it. I hope you found it helpful. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, uh, go to my website at www.preppreppforgmat.com and send me an email. Or you can go to www.keshwaniprep.com right? and send me an email. Thank you.